How to install side seam pockets. I already have my pieces cut out and the black is the lining. Because I use an elasticated waistband, I'm folding over the fabric. So I'm just making sure that my measurements are correct and I measure 12 centimeters from the top. Now I'm bringing my lining piece right sides facing together basically and I'm making sure that the piece is lined up with the mark that I made. Now I'm pinning my lining to the edge of the fabric and make sure that these pieces are definitely lined up together. Now you can use a fabric pen or chalk to make your markings. So from the top of the lining, I mark two centimeters down. Now from that line, I measure 16 centimeters and I make another mark. Now we want to do a straight stitch from the first line to the second line. I use a one centimeter seam allowance. Here I'm just making sure that all the pieces are lined up together. Now you back stitch as well to make sure that the stitches are secure and that's why my hand is in the way. I will be saying this a lot but you need to take your time. It takes as long as it takes, don't worry. Now I'm just going to trim my threads and show you what I've done. So you can see where my stitches have started and where they have finished. Now we're just going to cut this line. So we need to go right up to the stitch as close as you can, but making sure that you don't actually cut your stitches. Now we flip the lining to the back of the trousers. So now I'm showing you again. Sometimes it can look really confusing, so I need to make sure that I'm showing everyone exactly what I've done. Just making sure that all the pieces are lining up so we make our slips, is what I'm gonna call them today. Make sure that they are lining up together because we don't want anything to get crumpled up or folded over and sewn over. I'm just making sure that I'm pushing up the fabric as much as I can to create a seamless stitch. And I'm just pinning these in place so that I don't lose it while I'm sewing.
we need these pieces secure because now we're going to be top stitching. Now we need to make another mark so we know where to top stitch. So like we did before, we're just going to stitch from line to line. While you do this, you want to make sure that the lining of the pocket is lying as flat as possible. There was an incident one time where I accidentally caught the pocket while I was sewing and it was not fun. Please remember to pull out your pins as you go. And again, take your time. I haven't sped up this process because I wanted to show you exactly how long I take to do these steps, I really do take my time. So now we can see where I've made the marks and where my stitches have started and where they have finished. And on the back side as well, in a contrast thread so that you guys can see clearly what I've done. On to our next step. So I'm making sure that the pocket is lying flat because I now need to put the other piece on. So these are the pieces. This is the right side and the right side needs to be facing down. So the right side of this lining should be facing you and then you want to put this other piece right side facing down so both of the right sides are together. So we want to line these up as much as we can and secure it into place. Before I pin the second part, I'm just showing you that the two pieces need to be taut so you don't want to have any gathered pieces, you need them to be flat as possible against each other. Sometimes our previous marks do fade so don't be afraid to go over those again because we will need those for our next step. Now I'm going to be stitching back and forth. Some people do a mini mini zigzag stitch but I always just do a straight stitch and back and forth. and I get as close as I can to look at where the needle is because I want 
my stitches to match up with the top stitching that I did. So I go back and forth like four or five times. And we only want to do these stitches where we made our mark. Try not to go past that mark. Here you can see where my stitches are and how they've matched up with my top stitching as well. Now that we have both of those linings sewn in together, we are making sure that the pocket is all lined up properly because we now need to stitch these pockets closed so that we actually do have a pocket. You can use a regular sewing machine for this or a serger, which is what I use. So I have searched those pieces together and now we have a full pocket. So that is the pocket completed but there is one more step I thought would be really helpful to you guys and that is to attach the back of the trousers to the front of the trousers and making sure that we sewed that pocket seamlessly so I've got the back piece and the front piece and I'm just making sure that the pieces are lined up nicely and I use a mixture of clips and pins to do this now we want everything lined up as best as we can possibly get it and the black part of the lining does stick out and that's okay that's gonna be cut off we, we won't need that so still making sure that the pieces are matching up nicely we don't want to catch the pocket so I'm pushing the pocket inside so that it's out of the way we have a fiddly part of fabric so I've zoomed in to show you what you could do if you are struggling so you can see that it keeps just rolling 
so what you could do is just hold those pieces together first and pin those in place and then you can deal with the rest of it after. Now I only straight stitch it a little bit past the pocket because I end up surging everything together anyway. But if you are using a regular sewing machine to construct the whole garment then you would just sew all the way down the sides as usual. So when I'm sewing this I like to see that mark that I've made as a guide. So for me to be able to see my guide, I actually had to turn the fabric around. So I'm basically going to be sewing from bottom to top. Now my serger has a 7mm seam allowance and I need this straight stitch to be a 1cm seam allowance. So I'm going to be gradually going into the seam. I don't know how to explain that, but if you did a one centimeter seam allowance and then used the serger without connecting the, the stitches you get like a dent in the trouser and it's really not a good look so I've just made sure that this is how I do the steps from now on. Now you can see I'm pushing down this part of the pocket quite hard because every time I sew this it does like to raise So what I do, I get right to the bottom of that pocket, I stop my needle down, I lift up my presser foot and make sure that the pocket is as flat as it can possibly be like that and then I continue sewing because I definitely do not want any of these pieces to be gathered. So I'm using these stitches as a guide because I need these stitches that I'm doing now to go over that line or touching that line. It's quite difficult to explain but I hope you are following. So this presser foot that I'm using is a top stitch presser foot and it's really hard to use this when you're doing a pocket so I would suggest to use the regular presser foot. You want to make sure that your pocket is out of the way, you don't want to stitch on top of that. And making sure you keep those edges lined up together. Now that I've done that, I'm just checking to see if I've got my desired result. So I'm just showing you that there is a tiny, tiny gap that I'm not happy with and I want that to be closed. And the same on the bottom part of this pocket. So I need to go in again and go a little bit closer because I do not want any gaps. So I'm just showing you that I want to come in a little bit more onto the stitch.
Now this is what I want. I need it to be very, very close. This is the desired result for me. So that is it. That's your side seam pocket done. You can leave it like this. A lot of people do, but I always top stick. I hope this video was helpful. Thank you for watching.